but it's okay if you're starting off with zero skills and zero confidence. Okay, so what inspired you to become an educator, an entrepreneur, and a conductor? Um, well, I actually didn't aim to be all those things in the start. <laughs> those things sort of just came as opportunities in my direction, to be honest. So when I was in uh, school, when I was studying and doing my training, I was very intrigued with a lot of different um, fields. So I studied conducting on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, I also enjoyed teaching. I knew I always wanted to sort of be some version of an educator because I loved the teaching for many years, even before I started my bachelor's degree. So I knew that that was something that I kind of wanted to get into. And then the entrepreneurial side, that sort of just comes up just due to the life that we live now, you know, the times that we're living in, you know, as a musician, you kind of have to be in everything, right? You kind of have to put your foot in, in, in every pond, you know, to kind of make sure that you're versatile and that you're able to, to function in many capacities. So um, what inspired me, I think um, I was always sort of inspired to be an educator, but as far as conducting goes, I realized that that was a big part of um, the pan world in Trinidad in general, you know, just seeing things like World Music Festival and Feel Bad Festivals and noticing that there are conductors in front of steel bands. And I thought to myself, this is probably an important skill I should probably use. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just wanting to make sure that, that I can function, like I said, or I can successfully complete different types of tasks as a musician. And then while well, the entrepreneurship side sort of came just in a sense of just things that, that needed to be there. Not that I aimed to be, to be this entrepreneur, but it was more so that I saw some areas in which I thought we can benefit as panists and some areas I thought that we were maybe lacking that we needed certain things and that is how I sort of stepped into that role by accident or coincidentally if you're in the field of music you know in the arts in general especially given the times that we're living in you kind of have to be everything <laughs> to be successful because one thing may not work but if you're really good in a lot of areas then you're able to succeed and then you can also bring all those areas together to be even more successful. What are some things that you would like to see implemented in steel pan education? One thing that I've noticed at UCT, the University of Trinidad and Tobago, sometimes when our students come in, they're very, very strong players, but they don't necessarily have a very strong theoretical background or music literacy background. You know, they aren't able to sight read in, in a strong manner, which um, you were the exception, Sasha. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> You came in and was sight reading and we were like, what? <laughs> this is not normal. <laughs> you know, but um, that's not the case for most of the students coming in. So I do think that uh, music education, you know, especially in Trinidad and Tobago, can ensure that the music theory and the music literacy side of the education is implemented as well. Because a lot of our players become really good players being part of steel band, whether they're on a the stage side or they play for Panorama or maybe in their school band. But that theory and air training that supports that playing isn't necessarily there or is as strong. It is there, but it isn't as strong. So so I would hope that moving forward, that that is something that can come a little more to the forefront so that there's a better balance between the both. And should mention too, that a big part of our education is also missing our history and our cultural elements, at least the social side of the steel pan and how that has developed over the years. Those things should also be implemented into our education system. Okay, I'm done. I think so too. <laughs> I really think so too. What are some of the things that you would have to do as a music educator on the university level? To be a tertiary level educator, that means you would have either A, a ton of experience, or B, qualifications to be a tertiary level educator within the Western world, whether it's the US, Canada, Europe, you have to have some type of doctorate or lots of experience, a lifelong time of experience to be on that level. I do respect a lot of my colleagues at EPT because we're all practicing 
practitioners, right? You know, many times, sometimes you go to a music school or college of music in a university somewhere and you realize the professors stand in front of the classroom and, you know, and, and that's their job. Whereas for us at UCC, we do that. Plus, we also function within the professional world. I think to be prepared to be an educator on the tertiary level, especially in the times that we're living now, I think it's important to get those qualifications and be a practitioner within your field, somebody who is highly valued and respected. I think holding a certain level of professionalism is also important. And then too, I think one thing that's very important is knowing that you don't know everything as an educator and it's okay to keep learning. Just looking at the pandemic and how everything just switched. Everybody who learned to teach in front of a classroom now is like, oh no, now I have to change, you know, everything and fit this new normal. So I think a big part of, of preparing to be an educator is always being open-minded and willing to learn. So I would say that those are the top things, the qualifications, the experience, maintaining a professional um, portfolio and being open-minded, you know, about life and education in general, because things change, the world changes, your field changes. So you have to understand the changes that come with the market, the changes that come with the requirements of being successful within that profession so that you are then able to teach your students in the best way to prepare them for a professional life outside of school. What is next? Uh, what's next? <laughs> um, what's next? What's next for me? Well, I mean, I'm sort of um, working on a number of projects. And to be honest, before I could even think of what's next, it just comes, certain things just come my way. Where I don't even get time to sit down and be like, huh, what do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> you know, now that I'm working on Panitation, um, I've done the virtual steel band sort of series that's going to continue. Um, and that's a global project that brings panists around the world together to perform online. I recently did Pan Unity with Hugo Sad and Tracy Thornton. I'm at UCT, I'm working on a number of transcription projects. I'm also a member of Trinidad All Star Steel Orchestra, so I'm always working on projects with them. We are hoping to launch Panitation very soon. I'm a wife and a mother, so <laughs> I do need to dedicate some time to home and family. <laughs> Babies require a lot of attention. <laughs> So that's, that's kind of what's been going on with me. I anticipate that I'll be within these projects that I'm currently in for a little while. Instagram yes. all those things. Yeah, sure. We have Panitation. That's Pan, P-A-N, and then Notation, N-O-T-A-T-I-O-N, one word. We have that on social media. We're on Facebook and we're on Instagram. Um, I am on Instagram and Facebook as well. So And you can follow Virtual Steel Band as well. That's also on um, Facebook. And Virtual Steel Band has a website. And so does Panitation. So if you go to Panitation.com um, and VirtualSealBand.com, uh, well, Panitation.com site isn't up yet, but you will see um, just, a, just a little bit of information where you can put in your email address to subscribe to more information. And while well, Virtual Steel Band site is there, you can go onto YouTube. And Pan in Unity also has a website and social media presence. So a lot of people think there's only performance mm -hmm. and uh, you know for me personally I grew up as a performer you know that's all I did was performance and now I find myself not performing as much mm -hmm. you know because I'm more wrapped up in all these other projects mm -hmm. and and I'm okay with that because there's so many really great performers out there it's like performance world doesn't really need me <laughs> <laughs> you know but um I think, you know, there's so many different fields in music. There's music therapy, there's ethnomusicology. That's what I am. I'm an ethnomusicologist. You know, there is performances, education, conducting, composition. There's so many different directions um, that music can take you. Mm -hmm. So if you're really passionate about music and you love music, don't feel like you just have to fit into this one box. If you're passionate about it and you love it, you just have to find the right direction. Panitation is an online platform. The first side of the site is a music score side where panists can upload their compositions, their arrangements, and make them available for sale. We work with many of the copyright organizations. What has been happening before is steel pan arrangers would arrange music and not have the permission from the composer, which makes the sale of that arrangement illegal. The other side is a subscription in a more formal way. We will have dissertations and published articles, peer-reviewed articles. A monthly subscription gets you full access to our library. All of our profits goes back 
Kinsel community. So that's really the main idea behind Planet.